In September of 2008, a woman named Ognetta Westland left her home to go for a walk in the woods with her dog near Lofthammer, Sweden. When she did not return home that day, her husband, Ingmar Westland, decided to go out looking for her. He went looking in the woods where they would normally walk the dog, only to find Ognetta's battered dead body near a lake. Ingmar immediately called the police and led them to her body. And he was also immediately suspected and charged with the murder of his wife, arresting him on the spot. The reason for this was because that Agneta's body was found in a very remote area that most people would not have been in if they were just going for a walk like Agneta was. So for him to find his wife's body this easily on the same day she went missing was a dead giveaway to the police that he was the killer. He was subsequently held in police custody for only 10 days, but he remained the prime and only suspect for about six months. In the spring of 2009, the police examined the injuries on Agneta's body and they discovered that the killer was not Angmar, but instead a moose was responsible for his wife's death. Mooses, or elks, are not supposed to be aggressive towards humans, but this specific one that killed Agneta was believed to be under the influence of fermented apples, which upon consuming can have similar effects on the brains of animals that alcohol does for humans. Police believe that Ognetta's dog began barking at the moose, which, in its drunken state, became frustrated and attacked them, killing Ognetta and causing the dog to never be found again. This turned out to just be an awful case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. In the 90s and 2000s, over 40 crime scenes ranging from murders to burglaries all had the DNA presence of a single female. All of the crimes were committed in France, Austria, and Germany, and the Heilbronn Police Department in Heilbronn, Germany created a task force to help catch the criminal. They ended up naming her the Phantom of Heilbronn. The police would end up raising the reward for the criminal's capture to up to 300,000 euros. They spent approximately 16,000 hours in total trying to identify whoever this person was. In March of 2009, police were investigating a crime scene when they found the Phantom's female DNA in fingerprints on a male asylum seeker's application. Investigators ended up discovering that the phantom did not exist. The reason why the same female DNA was found in over 40 different crime scenes was because the cotton swabs that were used by many state police departments were found to have been contaminated with factory workers' DNA before shipping. This case ended up showing the forensic world how important it is to avoid cross-contamination involving DNA in crime scenes. And most of the crimes associated with the Phantom are still unsolved because of this. After four years of service in the Air Force, John Leonard Orr was honorably discharged in April of 1971. Orr returned to his hometown of Los Angeles where he eventually would be accepted into the Glendale Fire Department in 1974. By 1984, he had worked his way all the way up to captain and he was also working as an arson investigator. On October 10th, 1984, in South Pasadena, California, a huge fire broke out at an Olds Home Center hardware store, 
located in a shopping plaza. The store was completely destroyed by the fire and four people were killed, which included a two-year-old child. The day after the fire, many arson investigators from around Southern California, which included John, all investigated the destroyed store and declared the cause to be an electrical fire. But Orr insisted that the cause of the fire was arson. Because of this, investigations were launched to find out if the cause of the fire really was arson. And it was discovered that the fire was started with highly flammable polyethylene products, which caught fire and spread extremely quickly. Despite the evidence that was found, no suspect could be charged for the attack. In January of 1987, several fires were set in Bakersfield at the same time that a convention for arson investigators from California was held in Fresno. This led Captain Marvin G. Casey of the Bakersfield Fire Department to suspect that somebody involved with the fire department could be responsible for the arson attacks. During March of 1989, Yet another series of arson attacks were committed along the California coast in close conjunction with the Conference of Arson Investigators in Pacific Grove, California. By comparing a list of attendees from the Fresno Conference with a list of attendees at the Pacific Grove Conference, Casey was able to create a short list of 10 suspects. Everyone on this short list except for one suspect was cleared of suspicion when they discovered that a fingerprint found at one of the scenes was an exact match to John Orr's left ring finger. John Orr was discovered to be the person responsible for all of these arson attacks. Orr would be subsequently convicted and sentenced to life in prison in 1998 for his crimes. On the morning of August 4th, 2017, 69-year-old Lucien Perot and 39-year-old Olivier Boudin were both found dead in Perot's home in a town called Athon du Perche, which is about 150 kilometers southwest of Paris. Both men had apparently died while eating dinner. Their bodies were both found still around the table as if they had died very quickly. Suspicion fell immediately that there was foul play involved, but there was no sign of a robbery, a fight, or any kind of foul play at Lucien's home. Despite this, the prosecutor said that he could not rule out any involvement by a third party. Despite the fact that neither of the men were enemies to each other or anybody else, it was genuinely agreed upon that foul play must have been involved. Poisoning, whether accidental or not, seemed to be the accepted theory. The food items on the table were sent to the Pasteur Institute in Paris for tests, but the results came back negative for any kind of poison. It wasn't until the post-mortem results of the bodies came back that the causes of deaths were revealed. Five days after the two men died while at dinner, doctors said that Lucien had choked on a 44 gram chunk of beef rib that he could not chew and Oliver had a pre-existing heart condition known as cardiomegaly, which meant that his heart was abnormally large. And upon seeing his friend choke to death, the bloated heart seized and Oliver collapsed, dying from a heart attack. And Lucien would obviously die from choking to death. 